loves and welcome to a very long overdue Monday mindfulness video. I am so sorry it has taken me so long to get back to doing another episode for this little playlist on my channel. It's, I'm not gonna lie, it's not been a great start to 2022 for me and I'm gonna be talking a little bit about kind of what's been going on with me in this video and it's basically just been it's not been a good start so it's kind of thrown me for a loop I've not been as on it with things and I wanted to keep up doing my Thursday videos so I just haven't managed to film another Monday mindfulness and another reason that there's been a little bit of a gap is that I kind of wanted to film this once I was over this anxiety that I was having and kind of through this this sort of health anxiety stress issue which I am not yet because I just thought you know what, I'm just going to film it now I thought it would be better to wait until I was kind of over the, the hump of it and then I could talk about what I did to get to that point but I'm actually going to talk about it now because it is taking me just a bit of time to work work through this this issue that I'm having. So today's video is all about health anxiety and the the physical symptoms that anxiety and stress can then present which can then in turn create more stress and anxiety because you get anxious about what are these unusual symptoms. That is basically the cycle that I have been in myself. So first of all I want to apologise that I've got my hat on. I'm filming in my little summer house at, at my dad's house and it's it's quite cold so I put my hat on and then I took it off to film and I thought oh my god my hair is flat against my head so I'm just going to leave it on if that's okay because I am kind of, I'm not outside but it's not, there's no heating in this little room section. So apologies about the hat. So First of all, I thought I would talk a little bit about health anxiety, I think it can present itself in two ways and I'm not sure if there is another name for the second type, but the first, first type, health anxiety, is when, for example, you might have something, a very, a very common symptom, but your mind catastrophizes the situation and instead of, for example, it being, you know, just a sore head or a migraine or something else it's it's all of a sudden you know the absolute worst case scenario say you know say you're having a palpitation then you know you're about to have a heart attack you're about to have a stroke like things like that it's always jumping to this absolute worst conclusion and I think the issue with health anxiety is that the symptoms can be very very real you're not making up the symptom you're not imagining it but then what happens is anxiety and panic can set in and it really, really exasperates it. And speaking from experience, you can get to a point where you actually have no clue what is going on with your body. You have no idea what is being caused by anxiety. You have no idea what is a true symptom because you've got yourself completely wound up in such a state. So if that sounds like you, please do keep watching this video because I'm going to talk through my personal journey and some tips that I have taken to try and ease ease these feelings and thoughts and, and try and break away from this this cycle because what happens is you're, you're, you're maybe experiencing a symptom as I said you're getting stressed and anxious about it which makes the symptom worse or gives you other symptoms you then get stressed and anxious because you're thinking well what is this wrong with me what is this and it just goes round and round and round. And another element of this, which I think makes it worse, is the fact that we have so much information readily available for us. So within two seconds, you've Googled your symptom and you've read what it is or could be. And the thing is that these thoughts, you then start to believe these thoughts, which then creates an action, which, you know, it just perpetuates this whole cycle. And I do think if you are experiencing any symptoms right now, if you're experiencing health anxiety, if you're experiencing anxiety, do not Google the symptoms. Stop Googling because that is, I think, a key factor and it's what happened with me was I got completely obsessed with Googling symptoms, watching YouTubes about people talking about their symptoms, watching YouTubes like how I solved my... <sighs> so it's it then becomes... I would say obsessive really and addictive to what's the solution, how can I fix this, I'm going to try this and you're then stuck in this state of really there, there's no there's no way out of it and you, you stop seeing things clearly. So my first would definitely be if you've noticed that you keep googling or searching or trying to find the answer, I think stopping that, giving yourself a break from that should be the first step because 
with many of many things, there isn't going to be one thing that's a magic cure. It's not going to be suddenly eating something or drinking something or doing one thing. You know, that would be very rare for, I think, that to be the case. But in general, it's going to be maybe a lifestyle change or a shift of a few different things. So I do think trying to stop the Googling is, is a valid starting point. So I thought I would just talk a little bit about my symptoms and what happened with me and I think this is actually quite a common issue. It's basically what I've now understood it is a digestive issue. So the thing I first noticed was I was having a sort of sour taste in my throat and I googled it, of course it said this is acid reflux and then I started googling right how do we get rid of, rid of acid reflux. I started trying like Rennie's or Gaviscon I then found a whole lot of information all about how your stomach is acidic, it should be acidic, so you actually want to add in something more acidic to keep to keep the stomach valve closed because if there's not enough acid this is what causes it to open. I am no doctor, I don't know if that is true or not, but there's a lot of information on the internet saying to try apple cider vinegar, which is what I did try. And for me this made things worse because I I had no heartburn at the start of this. I had no heartburn at all, just this sour taste. Then I started taking apple cider vinegar every day and I started to feel a burning here as I was drinking it and it wasn't sort of just staying for like a second, it was kind of staying. And I thought, I don't, I don't like that at all. I think at that point I went to the doctor, they gave me a Meprazole. However, I'd got myself really wound up about taking a Meprazole because there was a lot of stuff on the internet. A lot of people saying go the unnatural route, go holistic, don't take the PPIs, they're really bad for you. There's a lot of negative press about them. They're... And by this point, I'd got myself into an absolute frenzied state of thinking, do I want to take this tablet? Do I want to continue with the apple cider vinegar? What do I do? And I just wanted someone to give me like a clear answer and I couldn't find it and I was continually trying to search for some information that would help me make the right choice. So I started Omeprazole, then I came off the Omeprazole. I then started having stomach pains. So my stomach started to feel very irritated. It felt just inflamed as I was eating. Um, every time I was eating pretty much, it was just feeling very uncomfortable and very irritated. So I went back on the Omeprazole. I've been on it for a wee while now and I've actually recently just increased the dose to see if that's gonna help. And to be honest, the Omeprazole hasn't done a huge amount for me in terms of reducing the, the stomach pain because now the main symptom I am still struggling with is this stomach pain. However, what I, I'm not necessarily wanting to talk about the biological symptoms that I'm experiencing, but I want, what I want to talk about is the fact that I got myself into such a state of panic and anxiety about this whole thing that it really started to affect me mentally and my mental health took a huge dip because I, and I read recently that if you're anxious, often people that struggle with anxiety, they want certainty, we want certain answers. I wanted to know, am I having acid reflux, am I not? Is this chest pain being caused by anxiety or is it being caused by heartburn? Is my stomach irritated because of gastritis, is it? And there was no certainty and I got to a point where I was experiencing physical symptoms of anxiety and stress as well as the stomach issues and I had no way of ascertaining which symptom was coming from where and I was really, I was really in a frenzied state. And the reason I'm talking about this in this video is because I just really want to offer any reassurance or any comfort to anyone who might be going through something similar because I then started to get into this mindset and it was because I read comments on the internet of people saying I have struggled with this for years I've you know I found no cure and I kept then telling myself that's what's going to happen to me and this was the anxiety I got stuck with was that I'm not going to get better I'm going to have stomach issues for the rest of my life and I, I will not be able to get an answer to this. That that was essentially what I started believing and sort of telling myself and it was this reoccurring, this rumination anxiety. And it then, as I said, it really started to affect my mood. I started to lose motivation for things. So um, there was a time that I think I took about five or six days off Instagram. I was really having 
a, a bit of a, an anxiety overload. I just, I, the only thing I could think about was my stomach and will this get better and how can I get better? Do I take the Emerpsil, take apple cider vinegar, do I take something else? It was utterly exhausting and I guess I just, I want to offer my personal experience and hopefully some, not necessarily advice, but even some comfort because whilst obviously in some cases the medicine will work and that's it, for me the medicine didn't seem to make a huge difference and one thing that I know was a constant <laughs> was my anxiety and stress. So I thought I need to tackle this anxiety before we can even see a, a clear picture. So I mentioned that I'd got myself into such a state with this anxiety that I was having physical symptoms. So I thought I would just talk through how anxiety can present itself in your body. And you might not be aware of these symptoms, maybe you have experienced them, but these are, the, the ones I was experiencing was chest pain, which is a really intense and frightening feeling. And I think what was so difficult for me was I could not work out whether this chest pain was heartburn or anxiety. And I still don't know at what point was it heartburn or was it anxiety? Like it could, it could potentially have been all heartburn or it could have been all anxiety, but I have no way of deciphering between the two because it was just so, it was so regular. I was having chest pain every day and it felt, it was just so uncomfortable and it was a really anxiety inducing symptom. And I've had chest pain once before at the start of the pandemic, I believe I did suffer I don't know whether it was a sort of mini panic attack or this indeed was a panic attack, but I read a really frightening article about COVID and I immediately was consumed with this idea that I was going to get COVID and I wouldn't survive it. That was, and my chest obviously in those moments really uh, constricted and the muscles obviously went into some sort of spasm because I then had chest pain for five days afterwards. And I remember thinking, I don't understand this. I like, what is going on? Is this a heart attack? Like, what is it? And I, I didn't really do anything about it apart from I was taking ibuprofen, which I don't even know if is the right thing to do. It's definitely not, if you're having stomach issues, don't take ibuprofen, but um, it eventually did clear. So that was my only other experience of having chest pain because of anxiety. So, but this, this was just so relentless. It was just, as I was waking up, I was scanning my body looking for symptoms. So, and I think this is when you know you've you've let the anxiety overtake a little bit because if you're waking up and you're self-assessing, I was like scanning, mentally scanning, like, am I feeling chest pain? Is my stomach sore? Is my throat sore? Is there a taste in my mouth? Is there any other symptoms? You know, I was all, almost looking for it or I was looking for it. So, just chest pain is a it's it's a common anxiety symptom but it it doesn't always doesn't always happen i think it's when your chest muscles you've started to breathe really really shallow and um the, the chest muscles have really tightened up and i think that was the other thing i noticed i would kept becoming so aware of my breathing which is a really random thing because all of a sudden i would be like okay i'm breathing and then I couldn't get back to a natural flow and I was just like try, trying to then forget about breathing and do it automatically but I kept becoming so aware of it and that was again quite anxiety inducing because I thought I can't breathe normally. So that was another symptom I would say was being very aware of breathing. The third one and this is quite unusual I, I think and well it's the one I've never experienced before not that many people seem to have heard of it, anyone that I've spoken to about it, but if you do Google it, it does say it's it's linked with both heartburn and anxiety, which was typical because of course, here I am again, which one is causing this? So what it was is basically something called globus sensation and it is this feeling that there is something stuck at your throat or there's something inflamed in there or it just feels like you can, you're struggling to swallow because of a ball or it's it's an unusual feeling. I think it's also called the hysterical ball. I've actually seen some TikToks on it now because um, I was searching. <laughs> I was searching all outlets for information on this but it made swallowing really difficult um, and what was also happening was I was swallowing a lot because this feeling was so uncomfortable which meant I was swallowing a lot of air 
which was an intense, and then kind of upsetting my stomach as well because you're getting this excess air going in. But the globus sensation was one of the weirdest symptoms. And I think, to be honest, I actually think I have had it from both anxiety and heartburn because when I was first having it, it felt so restrictive. It, oh, sorry, someone's shouting. It really felt like my throat was kind of choking itself. And I, interestingly, I spoke to my dad and my dad, he does suffer from stress, but he doesn't suffer from anxiety. So sorry, my camera cut out there. But what I was saying was that I ended up asking my dad about it. And he told me that he had actually suffered with globus sensation when he was about 30 years old and he was working in this job that he just didn't really enjoy. And he was, he was experiencing uh, an increased level of stress. And he noticed that he started to have this feeling where his, he said he was struggling to put his tie on because it felt so tight in his throat. And what he said was that when he would go out at the weekend, go out with his friends, it would disappear like on a Saturday night or a Sunday, he wouldn't notice it. But on a Monday, it came back this, this really tight feeling. So he sort of self-diagnosed it as being a symptom of stress. So I think when I was first having this feeling, it was definitely because I had suffered this this panic. I was really in a panicked state. I do think, however, on some issues, there was a point where this, this feeling did subside, but then I was getting a slightly, a much less intense feeling, but it still felt like there was something there. And I think that was globus sensation being caused by heartburn. So you can see how this has been a bit of a minefield for me, trying to work out what has caused what. So that was the three things I think I mainly noticed was globus sensation, being very aware of my breathing and the chest pain. And the other thing that I did notice, and I think this is quite a common symptom of stress, is to have a rash appear. So I had this really, really tiny little rash on the back of my hand, which was kind of on two, two fingers, but it was quite itchy and it just kind of flared up and then would stay for a few days and then it did subside and then maybe flare back up again. I was not in any way worried about that and I think that actually helped me think, do you know what, is this stress presenting itself? So I just wanted to talk a little bit about those because those symptoms, particularly the globus sensation and the chest pain, are really frightening, they're really, they're really disconcerting and I just wanted to offer this to anyone who maybe have experienced these symptoms that if you work on reducing your anxiety and stress, they, you should see um, improvement with it. So now I just wanted to talk a little bit about the stomach and the relationship between anxiety and stress because this is something that to be honest, I wasn't that aware of before now. And do you know what, it makes a lot of sense. When you think of phrases like, what does your gut say? Or <laughs> um, you feel that in your guts, like the, your stomach feels your emotions. And it's so true, like say you're nervous, you get that butterfly feeling. So it makes sense that if you're suffering stress, then your stomach can definitely feel the impact of that. I think what's happened with me is that there was an issue with the stomach and it's just got so exasperated and it's been unable to heal itself because my body has been in this tense state. And I did actually read that if you are like having increased levels of anxiety and stress, your body can't repair itself as well. So I think this is maybe why some issues um, really have, there can be longer term because they're, they're, your body's just not in, in a great state to repair the cells and try and get better essentially. So what I've really been looking at now is digestive health, trying to help my body get back to functioning normally. I'm still experiencing these stomach pains when I'm eating. However, what I've actually found has given me a little bit of relief, more than the Omeprazole, was actually going to get acupuncture. So I know that there, there's so many alternative medicine, medical options, and it's not for everyone, but I just haven't found much relief at all with the Omeprazole. So I, on, what day was it, maybe Wednesday? I went for acupuncture. I had no expectations that it was actually going to help much at all. But I have I have been for acupuncture lots of times before for neck pain and back pain. So I do trust I do trust that it works. But for the initial initially like this, I just wasn't sure. 
So I went in and I spoke to the acupuncturist and he, he was just so calming and he was, I actually found what he said really helpful. So if you've never been, basically what they do is they, they feel your pulse and your, your pulse can basically indicate a, a variety of different things. So it was a, so it was a Chinese herbal practitioner that I spoke with and so he tested my pulse and he said that my pulse was weak or it was a little bit weak um, and then he looked at my tongue and sorry this is a bit gross but he was like your tongue is a little bit yellow looking and he basically said that indicated that something in my stomach was not functioning correctly this was a d digestive issue which I kind of already thought but just I think hearing it from him I, I just found it helped it helped me just calm calm me down slightly I then went in for the acupuncture, he gave me acupuncture, he put quite a lot on my stomach, he put some on my arms, on my head, some on my toes, um, or my foot, like not quite my toes, sorry. <laughs> um, and he also gave me this tea to drink and I have started to see some relief. It's, it's not completely gone, but I'm thinking of going back for acupuncture because do you know what, I think if you find something that offers you that little bit of relief, it's worth doing so. And I think it, it obviously depends and I would always say first port of call go and speak to your GP but there is no harm in exploring some other options particularly with this where I would really like to be off the Amet result to be honest because I'm not sure I'm not sure it's I'm not sure it's helped and I'm not even sure if it could potentially be making it worse I'm not sure but I just really wanted to talk through this issue that I've been having recently and hopefully even offer just some reassurance that anyone that has experienced this or is currently experiencing this, you are absolutely not alone. And please, please remember that you will be able to solve this. We are going to be able to heal it because I think that was the number one thing that was really frightening me with this idea that I will never get better from this. And the problem is once you're then in this turmoil, it's so hard to break away from it. So just to close, I think I would say, please stop Googling, stop Googling your symptoms. Please start telling yourself that you will get better. We are going to sort this issue. Um, explore other options. You could maybe look at acupuncture or some hormone remedies as well if, if, the, if the medicine isn't working for you. And don't forget just to, to go back to your GP and say, look, I'm not getting relief from this. One thing I find really soothing, which I am trying to not do every night, but it's just, I do find it really comforting, is just putting a hot water bottle right on my stomach. It is so comforting and it's the one thing that really helps me feel better immediately. So you can also try that for immediate relief. But do let me know if you have any questions or any comments on this health anxiety topic. I just wanted to weigh in and give my experience with it. I know this might not be relevant for, for you or for anyone watching, but I, the main message is that anxiety can present itself in different ways and some of your physical symptoms or all of your physical symptoms may be down to anxiety and stress. And it's also really difficult to get a clear picture of what is going on when you're in this really anxious state. So other things you can do, which I've done myself recently, is started a yoga class. I've also joined a health club to do a little bit of... Sorry, my camera is out of battery, which shows that I've been talking for way too long. So just to finish, a couple of things that I've been doing. So I joined a gym to maybe do some classes just to help me break away from an anxiety cycle. Obviously going for walks after dinner is really good for your digestive health. Health, Going for walks in general, obviously talking about it. I am considering actually going to maybe speak to like a therapist or a counsellor just to help me discuss these these feelings that I've been having and this stress just because it has it has really been a rocky start to 2022 with this whole thing. So yeah, I just wanted to offer some support for anyone that might be struggling with any issues similar to this. Thank you for watching this episode of Monday Mindfulness. I will give you an update with how I'm getting on with everything, but thank you so much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe if you fancy seeing any more Monday Mindfulness. And you can also watch my fashion and lifestyle videos, which are up on a Thursday at seven o'clock. Take care everyone, bye.